This is KGW News at 11. The conflict between Israel and Palestine ratcheted up today. Israeli airstrikes killed eight children and flattened buildings with Associated Press and Al Jazeera offices. Today marked six days of intense fighting. And across the country today, supporters of Palestine held protests. These were the scenes in New York, D.C. and Portland earlier today. President Biden also spoke to both Israeli and Palestinian leaders. He expressed strong support for Israel's right to self-defense, but raised concerns about civilians dying and protecting journalists. NBC's Rob Sanchez has a story from the Middle East. A surreal and pretty horrifying scene in Gaza City as the Israeli military struck a multi-story building containing the Gaza bureaus of the Associated Press, Al Jazeera, and a number of other international media outlets. Earlier today, the owner of the building got a call from the Israeli military saying, we are going to strike this property. So these journalists basically had enough time to get out of their offices, go across the street, turn their cameras around and then film their bureaus being destroyed by an Israeli airstrike. Now, the Israeli military says Hamas was also using this building to house military assets. They have not been very specific about what those assets were, but they insist this was a legitimate military target. As far as we know, no one was injured in that strike. Everyone was able to get out in time, but it is causing outcry around the world. The president of the Associated Press, Gary Gary Pruitt saying in a statement that he is shocked and horrified by the attack. We narrowly escaped a, a huge loss of life. We had 12 journalists in that building. And those brave journalists not only got out, but they were able to salvage much of our equipment because it's important that we continue to tell this story. Now, this strike, one of only a number that Israel has carried out in the last 24 hours. We now have nearly 40 kids dead in Gaza and nearly 140 people killed in total. On the Israeli side, nine people are dead, including an Israeli man killed in a rocket attack on the city of Ramat Gan earlier. So for now, the violence continues with no ceasefire in sight. Raf Sanchez, NBC News, Beirut. Here at home, several hundred people gathered in Terry Shrunk Plaza in downtown Portland. The spike in violence between Israel and Palestine gave today's rally an even deeper meaning. Art Edwards has more. Yes, the liberation bring the whole thing down. Hundreds of people filled Terry Shrunk Plaza, many of them with signs supporting Palestine. This is Nakba Day, which Same recognizes the destruction of my Palestinian villages my... after the fallout from the 1948 Palestine War. Palestinians are systemically, systematically silenced on every single platform. They're silenced in academia. They're silenced on the political stage. They have no ability to be an actual narrative. The Palestinian story is one that's dehumanized. Grandmother Speakers Neil address the gathering, village, telling stories between, passed down to their yes. families, like the young girl who spoke of her grandfather and his family when he was a teenager in Palestine. Uh, the Israelis found out that they were um, that they were leaving, so they bombed our truck. Uh, to the point where my grandfather, he, his hair turned white when he was 14 from all the stress and he broke his kneecaps. She said it was important to share his story with others. I'm all alone in this world sometimes I feel like and my grandfather couldn't be here today to share his story so that's what I want to do. I want to share his story so people learn, so people know what we're going through. The fighting between Palestine and Israel has intensified over the last month but the violence goes back decades. The UN voted for Palestine to be split into separate Jewish and Arab states back in 1947. The plan was accepted by Jewish leaders, but rejected by the Arabs. Art Edwards, KGW News. More people are getting shot and killed on Portland streets. Groups are coming up with different ways to try to stop the violence now. So far, 31 people have been killed this year in Portland. At this time last year, there were only four homicides, and back in 2019, there were three. The trend is happening all across the country, actually. Now, Portland police are teaming up with the FBI to solve these crimes and try to prevent more from happening. While they look for new ways to stop the bloodshed, community organizations say it'll take accountability from Portlanders. We know our kids hanging out with gang, with gang members. When are we going to say something? We have direct responsibility, and the police is not going to stop. I don't care if they got a task force. I don't mean nothing because there's too many different groups involved. 
Meanwhile, police are concerned about potential shootings at vigils and funerals after seven people were shot at one last month. Portland police also says if the high rate of homicides continues, they'll look at options like adding officers or moving resources around. Although the CDC says people who are vaccinated don't have to wear masks, the mask mandate in Oregon still stands. We've heard mixed messaging from the governor and other leaders about when you can ditch masks, and we're still waiting for clarity. Galen Etlin continues our coverage tonight. It's the bridge many have waited for us to cross in the COVID pandemic. No more masks. The CDC says nationally, people who are vaccinated against the virus don't need one in most indoor or outdoor settings. Now it's up to states to make the next move. Oregonians now have a choice, either get vaccinated or continue wearing a mask. Governor Kate Brown says Oregon will follow the new CDC guidance, but the Oregon Health Authority is still working to update its rules. 211 told KGW Saturday it doesn't know when the mandate will change. So that leaves this choice. Some businesses may prefer to simply continue operating under the current guidance for now. Big stores like Costco, Walmart and Trader Joe's put out statements that vaccinated customers are welcome to take off masks inside. But in Oregon, that mandate is still in place until an update comes out. OHA said that could eventually mean asking for proof. We'll have to have a system in place um, for asking about vaccine status. It's been a lot of kind of back and forth. For everyday people like Ethan Bliss, not always able to catch every news conference, keeping up with these changing guidances and resulting gray areas is tough. It's kind of been a struggle throughout this whole quarantine time. And so the public then comes to the business looking for answers. And unfortunately, we don't have them. Landon Burningham owns Physique Fitness in the Salem area. He wishes Oregon had a guidance ready before announcing it would follow the CDC. You know, everyone gets really excited and they want those things to happen effective immediately. And then we look like the bad guy. We look like we're not adopting this new, potentially wonderful rule. What do you want to change? I think the biggest thing is we just need clarity. He and many others also say businesses asking for vaccination status isn't realistic. Because how are you going to ask everybody for proof? Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm taking my mask off. In Washington, it's a little clearer. Governor Jay Inslee said effective immediately, fully vaccinated people can go maskless and gather in most indoor and outdoor settings. I mean, that's the incentive here is to get vaccinated. Jackie Wood lives in Washington and said her state's guidance makes sense. Get vaccinated <laughs> now while it's free and available. Overall, cities and businesses can maintain mask requirements. Most grocery chains in the Portland Metro told KGW they plan to keep masking rules for now. Galen Etlin, KGW News.